Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here, all the more so since uh, Danilo Struk was one of my professors when I was a student at the University of Toronto. I have uh, fond memories of, of this university, this city, uh, and this community, so it's nice to be back. Um, this is going to be a difficult subject. Uh, it's not an easy subject at all uh, for Ukrainians or for Jews. Um, and I think I should uh, explain how I got into uh, studying this book, and Dokia Humenna. Uh, it's, it's going to be grim and dismal. So maybe I'll begin with uh, get the humor out of the way first. I'll tell you an anecdote. This is a true story. Uh, I have a friend. He may well be a friend of yours, too, called uh, Peter Matalainen in Edmonton. One day, Peter was in Montreal looking for directions, and he turned to an obviously Jewish man to ask directions to where he was going. And the man gave him directions and said, uh, you're not Jewish by any chance, are you? Now, Peter Matalainen is of Finnish origin. His, his parents came from Finland, and he's from Thunder Bay originally. So Peter said, no, uh, I'm not Jewish. Uh, the old man said, well, are, are you sure you're not Jewish? You, you know, you, you look very Jewish. And uh, Peter said, no, I'm not Jewish. And the old man said, you know, you shouldn't be ashamed of being Jewish. <laughs> Peter says, no, I'm not Jewish, I'm Finnish. The old man shook his head very sadly and said, you know, you can't finish being Jewish. <laughs> That's a true story. It's a true story from Peter. So, uh, just, as, um, just as Jews have certain sort of uh, obsessions and certain uh, identity marking moments, Ukrainians do too, and very often Ukrainians are linked, these, these important moments in Ukrainian history and Ukrainian literature are linked to Jews. Um, I got interested in this subject because it kept coming up, and uh, I was amazed to discover that there's so little written about Jews in Ukrainian literature, Jews in Ukrainian culture. You know, Jews and Ukrainians have been arguing for a thousand years. The first, the first chronicles written a thousand years ago already record arguments between Christians in Kiev and Jews. There, at the turn of the 20th century, one third of all Jewry lived in what today is Ukraine. And Ukraine is the only place where one-third of Jewry lived either in villages, in rural settlements, or very close to villages. Ukrainians have a very close, a very intense relationship with Jews. And I was, I was uh, concerned to break down certain misconceptions. For example, the misconception that these were two solitudes, that these two communities never... never communicated, that they had very little in common, that they lived separate lives. So I got interested in this, and I've, I've written a, a book, which uh, I hope will be out in the next six months to a year, about uh, Jews in Ukrainian culture. One of the problems, though, is that we live with the perspective of the Holocaust. We live looking back on this history through the prism, through the filter of what happened in 1919, during the pogroms, and in 1941, during the Holocaust. This um, literature of 1941, I think, needs to be more thoroughly analyzed, more thoroughly thought about. And I searched for, I searched for descriptions of what happened. And that's how I found Dokia Humenna. To my mind, her work is uh, the best uh, uh, account of 1941 and one of very few that uh, really raises provocative and interesting questions. Plus, I think, uh, I think we owe it to that generation, the generation, the post-Second World War generation, to take their literature, what they wrote, a lot more seriously. We've 
I think, ignored much of that literature. Much of the memoir literature of the post-Second World period has never been analyzed, has never been collected, has never been thoroughly described even. So uh, this, these are all reasons why I got interested in Dukia Humenna. Well, the account I'm going to talk to you about is Khrushchev Yar, 1941 to 1943, Roman Kronika, she calls it, a novel chronicle. It was published in 1956. It describes occupied Kiev and focuses very heavily on the early months of the German invasion, devoting half its pages to the period from June until December 1941. As you know, this is a very controversial time, and re remarkably little documentation exists on this in Ukrainian literature. The novel is particularly interesting because of the amount of attention it devotes to Jews. Now, it's less well known that there is also a diary that Humenna kept uh, from 1941 to 1943, and this diary is the basis on which the novel is written. The diary is 302 pages long. It has never been republished. Um, I found it in uh, the Osredok Ukrainian Cultural and Educational Center in uh, Winnipeg. And, you know, in those days they would, uh, they would type several copies through a, through a carbon copy. So maybe three, four maximum five copies could be made. This looks as though it might have been the third or the fourth copy, so there might be a couple more copies around. And on the pages, some pages are missing, and it says these pages were sent to the journal Ker Kerma, Stajetsia, Kerma. I found the first issue, I don't think the second ever appeared. I don't know if, this ever, if these pages ever were published. So until I find the, these pages, I am assuming that none of this uh, diary actually has appeared. Why is the diary important? Because it treats the period with a lot more frankness, a lot more openness than does the novel. The novel was written between 1946 and 49. In the three years following the war, Humenna emigrated to New York, and that's where it was published. Some of the personal names in the diary are given explicitly. They are thinly veiled under pseudonyms in, uh, in the novel. Uh, also, there's a significant difference in tone and message, which suggests that she was rethinking what she, what she had written in the diary. Let me first characterize Humenna for you. Her point of view can be characterized, summarized, in, in general terms as follows. First of all, she's a woman writer and a civilian. She's anti-Soviet and anti-Nazi. After being heavily criticized in the early 30s for uh, things that she wrote and said, Humenna was effectively banned from writing throughout the, the, the ten years leading up to the war. During this time, she could not publish um, she was treated as a pariah by many fellow writers. However, although she showed defiance towards the regime she was, and was blacklisted, she was never imprisoned. She, in fact, in the diary, describes herself in the 30s as a true believer, a youthful idealist, one who complained that a segment of the population which included the leadership of the Writers' Union was living a life of luxury as a privileged caste. And she, as a, as a true believing communist, felt this was unjust. She was punished for this. Um, now, in 1941, when the war breaks out, she has no further illusions about the regime. She's embittered uh, against the Soviet system, which she considers hypocritical, corrupt, brutally repressive, and she's particularly scornful of leading writers. 